Chapter 4 If you return, O Israel, declares the Lord, to me you should return. If you remove your detestable things from my presence and do not waver, and if you swear, as the Lord lives, in truth, in justice, and in righteousness, then nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, remove the foreskin of your hearts. O men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my wrath go forth like fire, and burn with none to quench it, because of the evil of your deeds. Declare in Judah, and proclaim in Jerusalem, and say, Blow the trumpet through the land, cry aloud, and say, Assemble, and let us go into the fortified cities. Raise a standard toward Zion, flee for safety, stay not, for I bring disaster from the north, and great destruction. A lion has gone up from his thicket, a destroyer of nations has set out, he has gone out from his place to make your land a waste. Your cities will be ruins without inhabitant. For this put on sackcloth, lament, and wail, for the fierce anger of the Lord has not turned back from us. In that day, declares the Lord, courage shall fail both king and officials. The priests shall be appalled and the prophets astounded. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, surely you have utterly deceived this people and Jerusalem, saying, It shall be well with you, whereas the sword has reached their very life. At that time it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, A hot wind from the bare heights in the desert toward the daughter of my people, not to winnow or cleanse. A wind too full for this comes for me. Now it is I who speak in judgment upon them. Behold, he comes up like clouds, his chariots like the whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are ruined. O Jerusalem, wash your heart from evil that you may be saved. How long shall your wicked thoughts lodge within you? For a voice declares from Dan and proclaims trouble from Mount Ephraim. Warn the nations that he is coming. Announce to Jerusalem, Besiegers come from a distant land. They shout against the cities of Judah. Like keepers of a field are they against her all around, because she has rebelled against me, declares the Lord. Your ways and your deeds have brought this upon you. This is your doom, and it is bitter. It has reached your very heart. My anguish, my anguish, I writhe in pain. Oh, the walls of my heart! My heart is beating wildly. I cannot keep silent, for I hear the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Crash follows hard on crash. The whole land is laid waste. Suddenly my tents are laid waste, my curtains in a moment. How long must I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people are foolish, they know me not, they are stupid children, they have no understanding. They are wise in doing evil, but how to do good they know not. I looked on the earth, and behold, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and behold, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and behold, there was no man, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and behold, the fruitful land was a desert and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, The whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. For this the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above be dark. For I have spoken, I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. At the noise of horsemen and archer every city takes to flight, they enter thickets, they climb among rocks, all the cities are forsaken, and no man dwells in them. And you, O desolate one, what do you mean that you dress in scarlet, that you adorn yourself with ornaments of gold, that you enlarge your eyes with paint? In vain you beautify yourself. Your lovers despise you, they seek your life. For I heard a cry as of a woman in labor, anguish as of one giving birth to her first child, the cry of the daughter of Zion gasping for breath, stretching out her hands, Woe is me, I am fainting before murderers. Chapter 2 for you yourselves know, brothers, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we had boldness in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the midst of much conflict. For our appeal does not spring from error or impurity or any attempt to deceive, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not to please man, but to please God who tests our hearts. For we never came with words of flattery, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed, God is witness. Nor did we seek glory from people, whether from you or from others, though we could have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. 
For you remember, brothers, our labor and toil. We worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, while we proclaimed to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct toward you believers. For you know how, like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. Hello and welcome to Bible Time. Today, Jeremiah chapter 4. The Lord called the people of Israel to repent and come to Him, or they will face the punishment of God. The Lord was ready to forgive them and take them back if they would just turn away from idols and come to Him. The prophet Jeremiah, knowing the horrors of God's judgment in advance, he was broken and was weeping over the horrors of God's judgment on every side for their wicked ways and turning their back on God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1-13 through 13, Paul speaks to the believers in Thessalonica that he didn't try to impress them with flattery words or to manipulate them, for his only purpose was to please God rather than men. He loved and cared for them like a mother to her child with the love and gentleness. So Paul, Timothy, and Silas share the gospel and share also their personal lives with them. Paul never stopped working day and night so that it would not burden them and treat them like a father to his child, offering comfort, exhortation, and encouragement. I love it when Paul speaks about how he take care of them like a mother to a child and he treated them like a father to his child. And so we see this kind of love that Paul has shown to them. It was not just merely the gospel, but it is the love that he gave to them that impresses them and allow them to receive the gospel and understand the truth of the gospel because they were able to share their lives with them. And we need to do the same. We are telling other people about Jesus, we have to be ready to love them as well. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to share the gospel, tell them a good news about Jesus Christ, but not just to speak about it and to treat them like a mother, treat them like a father who will truly care for their children. Help us to really love them that way so that our message would have your love expressed in us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.